Hey, I'm Felissa Rose, and you're watching Keto and Crime. An MLM based on what can only be described as hawking some ugly-ass leggings. Yes, of all the MLM types out there, this is one of the most notorious, the one most guilty of taking advantage of the most vulnerable single moms, retirees, people that felt they haven't lived up to their potential. I mean, look at that legging. It looks like you spilt bleach on a black legging. Who would want to buy that? But yet, they sell these women on the fact that these leggings are going to make them their own boss, rich, wealthy, upper middle class, whatever. They're, my God, it looks like Steve Young threw up on that. Anyway, let's uh, take a look at a Keto and Crime Classic where we look at one of the most predatory of all the MLMs out there, LuLaRoe. Coming up next on Keto and Crime. people each the more people that get involved the more people who are investing the more money we're all gonna make it's not a pyramid scheme it is a it's not even a scheme per se it's I have to go make a call hey everyone keto comic here coming at you with a white collar crime Wednesday and uh, this one I'm very excited for. This one was a subscriber request. So we're going to get into the wonderful world of... Can't say that word. We're going to get into the wonderful world of geometrical shape scams with taking on one that has actually come under a lot of legal scrutiny. Not just criticism, but actual legal scrutiny in the world of MLMs. LuLaRoe. So we're about to get into that hot and heavy. I am in a new setting today. This room has a little bit better lighting, so I thought I would uh, give it a shot. Anyway, let's get going. Have you ever just been sitting around, you know, playing on Facebook, playing on YouTube, and then your messenger goes off and you see something like this, usually from some girl that you barely knew in high school or haven't heard from through high school or maybe like me even bullied you in high school now coming at you about their wonderful opportunity and then you go to their website and you see all these wonderful meme memes about success because they're a boss babe well that's about what we're about to get into and as you can one good sign of this is somebody that you otherwise would not have any other contact with and they overuse positive acclamations and they overuse emojis definitely but they're wanting to recruit you into their business and that's what's so bad about these type of scams LuLaRoe is one of many, many multi-level marketing scams, which is really just, or multi-level marketing companies, which is really just the old geometrical shape scam repackaged into a, a new thing. Instead of just bringing people in to give money, and then everybody, you know, kind of splits the money as in an old scam, these actually have products that they sell, and they disguise it with clever terms like network marketing, public marketing, uh, you know, just clever things like that. And so LuLaRoe operates within this business. And the whole business model is suspect. But especially LuLaRoe. There's a lot of companies in this space. Not just LuLaRoe, which we're about to cover. But there's doTERRA, Young Living. Avon fits into this. Even though I do know people that were pretty successful with Avon. Uh, Tupperware, believe it or not, operated in, in, on this business model. So many. I mean, you'd name me a company that is sold... Amway, if you name me a company that has a product or products that is sold door to door or from person to person and they, you know, they have to order and keep the inventory up, most likely it operates within the multi-level marketing space. So let's get into LuLaRoe, shall we? LuLaRoe was founded late 2012, early 2013 in Corona, California. It had two founders. Deanne Brady, who actually named the company after her three granddaughters, 
hence the name LuLaRoe, and Mark Stidham, who was her business partner and also functions as the current CEO. The company they founded was originally just going to be a mainstream women's apparel company and sell to stores and boutiques just like any other, but there was some financial trouble along the way and they decided that it might be better to allow recruitment of independent salespeople to sell the product. So they were first known for their leggings. If you go online, you can see all kinds of articles, good and bad, about LuLaRoe leggings. Some people love them, some people hate them, but that was their first thing. And then they branched into other, other types of apparel and basically nailed down that the model of selling to distributors who would then sell to other people was the best model for them. And that kind of describes their overall opportunity. They market it to women. Usually all of these MLM scams are marketed toward women, particularly military wives and housewives, because it's something you can do at home, you can do your own, you can set your own schedule. It doesn't really matter where you are in the world now with social media, because a lot of these people sell their stuff over social media. But basically they more market the opportunity rather than the product, because they have all kinds of products, from dresses to leggings to shirts to pants. Uh, some of them really don't look all that good. I mean, they're the kind of stuff that I would pass by in a department store in an instant. Some of them are pretty, some of them aren't, but I guess that's with all clothing brands. So they really market the opportunity instead of the actual product. The product is just a thing to keep them from being labeled as one of those scams we're not allowed to talk about. And so they basically market it toward women. There are some men that get into this, particularly with brands such as Amway. And uh, there's one where you actually sell like varieties of meat called Man Cave. Yeah, look that up. It's a real thing. It's mostly a male sales force, but for the most part, they're marketed toward women and they tell you you're going to be a boss babe. That's what they call themselves. And you're going to run your own business. You're going to sell to your, you're going to recruit your own distributors under you and you're going to sell our products. And then they want you to start with the most the low hanging fruit, so it's normally your friends and family. And that's why you end up getting those messages on Facebook from people because they've gone through their friends and family and now they're down to people, acquaintances that they might've known in high school. So that's just how it goes. But basically they want you to recruit people in your circle, social circle to work under you selling their product. Now, if you're actually looking for a legitimate work from home opportunity, there's many things out there. Go to sites like Upwork, Fiverr, you can get legitimate work from home positions. But any, any job that wants you to buy in and doesn't offer a salary or benefits or anything is suspect. And that's one of the bad things about LuLaRoe. Most of these multi-level marketing scams, excuse me, companies offer a buy-in of somewhere between, you know, $300, $500, maybe $750 for your starter kit. Sorry, y'all, my cat heard me say multi-level marketing and started screaming. She's got the right idea. But most of these starter kits, you know, anywhere from $300, $500, $750 because that's where you get all of your products to show because most of them function either on marketing over the, you know, over the web with virtual parties where you go live on Facebook and show all your products. That's Little Rose's main thing. Or there are actual parties that you throw. Remember the Otupperware parties or the, uh, there's a company that uh, actually sells sexual accoutrement that functions on this level uh, but it's either parties or online selling or door-to-door -door selling in the terms of Amway or Cutco knives and yes those Cutco knives are just as big an MLM as any others don't fall for that basically what I'm saying you have to spend a chunk of money to get a starter kit of products to start start selling door-to-door -door that started in whether it's door to door parties or online, you have to have something to show people to sell to make them to believe you have a legitimate business going on. Little Row is one of the most expensive. Your starter kits, which includes a variety of different uh, apparel items and sizes, be prepared to lay out anywhere from five thousand to seven thousand dollars for a Little Row starter kit. And here is the kicker. You have no control over what they send you. They could send you all leggings, all scarves, all jackets, all pants, and the most hideous colors ever that would never sell to anybody. 
except maybe people in a clown troop, you have no control over that. And that's where their problems started. But before we jump into the scandals surrounding LuLaRoe, let's again talk about the anatomy of a multi-level marketing. You have start up with the founders. In our case, that would be our two founders of LuLaRoe who make the most money. They are part of what is known as an upline. Consider yourself as just your basic distributor that sells to their friends, sells to their families, throws parties, what have you. Above you, you have several layers like levels on a geometrical shape we're not allowed to talk about above you called your upline. Well, the founders are at the very top of that upline. And then you come down to maybe a regional distributor, which handles a certain section of the country and everybody there is under them. And then you have districts, which is maybe states and counties. And then you have your local distributors, which is finally you're a downline or a bitch, as I like to call it. I'm sorry to, but the, I mean, I know people that have done well at MLMs, but that's because they got in on one of these other top levels. You know, it wasn't already so saturated. That they started out as an independent distributor. They were able to move up pretty quickly because it was still new. If you're on the upline, you might do all right. But as far as most people in the local distributors make no money, they, they either break even or they lose money, which we're going to look at some data that backs that up. So basically on these, the higher you are in the level system, the more you make and you make money off the sale of not only the products you sell, but the products of the people you recruit sell. So that's where all your money comes in. So how much do consultants make? And this is pretty standard across the industry. Ironically, LuLaRoe no longer publishes these numbers on their website. I wonder why. But this is some stuff that Business Insider was able to pull before that went away. But a sponsor, which is more of a national consultant, they say can make around $44 million a year. A trainer, $231,000. A coach, $888,000. And a mentor, $2,472,000. You get the drift. But the last few releases on their website shows that these are far from the norm. These are probably averages taken from the highest earners in the early days of LuLuRoe. Most people earn about an average. Those that actually make money, those that are at maybe the trainer level, which is like one up from the regular distributor, make about $4,000 a year. Now for all the stuff that you have to do, all the stuff that you have to buy, they actually require you to order so much inventory and they require those under you to order so much inventory. That's where their sales come in is actually selling to their distributors. So you, you're you urged at all time to keep buying inventory. There have been, and there's a lawsuit about this, but there have been people that have been urged to sell their car, max out their credit cards, mortgage their house, sell their breast milk. Oh, you didn't misunderstand me. I said women have been encouraged to sell their breast milk. Take a gander at these two. We've been trying to work through things and figure out how to make money. And they're selling some other things, and then finally this, this opportunity came up. She found out. They just recently had a baby. And she found out that she could supply some of her breast milk and sell it to the NICU units to help those infants that are in the NICU. And people pay for that. And she's been doing some of that to save some money to get her initial kit. And she's so excited to start LuLaRoe and do it without getting into debt and yet helping some other people in these babies as she is getting into her business. So she saved $4,500 so far from selling her breast milk into the hospital NICU. And I was just like, I was blown away. She is so excited. I, I when, when we came out of there, she, she talked to us at first and she came back over and started talking to us and her excitement for what Lulu can offer her. To be able to order more inventory to keep the money coming in to their upline. Because really, once you're recruited, it's all about making your upline money. They don't care. Until you start recruiting people under you, you really don't earn a whole lot of money selling the products because they're, they're crap. There's plenty of videos on YouTube if you want to talk about how bad quality little row clothes is just or apparel is go google that i don't need to put that up for you but there's like even instructional videos on how to put the leggings on because so many people say they rip the first time they put them on well they actually have how-to videos on how to actually slowly put them on to keep them from ripping now if you have to put out an instructional manual to show how not to rip your clothes you've got a problem show you what i got because it's a piece of crap she is fighting mad. She is just one of thousands of women complaining about the super soft leggings they purchased only to discover they have holes. 
they're ripping. Um, they're wearing them for a few hours. They're wearing them for a few minutes and finding holes and, and large, substantial tears. Christina the Hanks side. used to sell the leggings. She showed me a pair that an angry customer returned to her. They're holy. Um, the entire backside is blown out. The company LuLaRoe advertises the leggings as close to your own skin as you can get, with all the perks of, ahem, not being naked. But many women say they were, in fact, left with bare bottoms. A class action lawsuit describes the leggings as tearing as easily as wet toilet paper. But anyway, so let's just say that the majority of people that earn money earn not even enough to even bother, and that the majority of people lose money. With that in mind, let's get over to the lawsuits and other scandals surrounding LuLaRoe. Now, the owners of LuLaRoe, the two founders that we, we talked about, they are very, very little information is available on them, but just say that the few things I was able to glean shows that they are still standing behind their company, their model. They say they never not paid anyone. They never encouraged people to do outlandish things to keep, you know, or in their inventory, and they are still in operation. None of these lawsuits that are actually lawsuits have been settled yet. So Lula Rowe is still out there recruiting and selling galore because sometimes it takes years for these things to be settled. But... The early, the first lawsuit was in early 2017 when it was filed by customers, people that just bought the clothes and bought the leggings from Lulu Row, basically complained that they weren't charging proper sales tax. So their mid-level and bottom-level distributors filed a lawsuit saying that Lulu Row was not filing sales tax, which left them owing a bunch of sales tax at the end of the year. And this one is for a, this is a 300 million dollar lawsuit that is still pending. Later in 2017, a class action lawsuit was filed by uh, in Corona, California, just by the Department of Justice, accusing them of being a pyramid scheme based on the accusations that they were encouraging people to do anything to keep buying inventory, which we just, just discussed. That's the hallmark of a pyramid scheme is whatever you have to do, keep the money coming in from your downline. Uh, related to this, in the just after these in 2018, they used to team up with a Down Syndrome based charity that, um, you know, they gave a certain amount of their sales to this charity, which in turn provided, you know, education and work opportunities for people with Down Syndrome, which is a noble cause. But then in 2018, this company suddenly withdrew their endorsement of LuLaRoe because one of their top level distributors made some very disparaging remarks about people with Down Syndrome. So that's another thing. That's not necessarily the company's fault, but it's part of this, so we have to address it. And then in de December 2018, in the midst of mounting debt because of all the lawsuits, uh, the fact that their ability to recruit new distributors had dropped substantially, they began doing layoffs, they began shrinking, and finally their chief manufacturer, this is the the company that made their clothes, probably the same factory that made it, that made uh, Jacqueline Hill's uh, makeup because it was all shabbily made, let me tell you that. Providence Industries sued them for 49 billion, 49 million because they have not been paid in seven months. Lula Rowe absolutely denies this, but still. And then in February of this year, hundreds of complaints filed against them about uh, being forced to buy new inventory, about when you quit, they were supposed to buy back any existing inventory. They were not doing that, or they were taking the inventory back and then offering you half of what it was worth. So a lot of different complaints coming in. It caused the Better Business Bureau to lower their rating to an F. And that's kind of where we stand right now. They're in limbo. They're failing financially, definitely. You can Google that, but they are still active. We'll just have to see how these lawsuits turn out. They can take anywhere from five to ten years to actually settle. So that's where we are with Little Row people. This was kind of a short one, I know, but it it because there were lawsuits involved, it definitely falls under the category of white collar crime. The problem with most MLMs, it never gets that far. We know they're scams. We know how they treat people. We know that people lose money getting involved in them, but there's not any real lawsuits that actually put it into the into the realm of an actual scam or crime. This one did, which is why I did it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'll be back with Amberlynn reactions, reactions to other YouTubers, and Sunday I'll be back with my first 
true crime for Bloody Sunday, Bloody Sunday with the case of Judith Ann Neely, which is near and dear to my heart because it occurred around where I grew up. So be back Sunday with that. Be back the rest of the week with your favorite reactions and drama from around YouTube. Thank you so much, guys. Remember, ketosis. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Keto Comic. Out.